Hi, I'm GNT and I'm here with Carl Van Roon, multiple world champion, and he has a master's degree in sports science. <laughs> what are you going to take us through today, Carl? Cheers, mate. Um, today I'm going to be taking you through counters to an opponent who uses spinning kicking techniques. We'll be talking about different angles and how to take advantage of the opponent and set up our counters. Okay, everyone, so we're going to begin with the spinning back kick. It's one of the most powerful kicks in the martial arts and it utilizes some of the biggest muscles in the body and a sequence that generates a lot of power. So, you know, you're putting your glutes into this, you're getting more force from the rotation, and then you're contacting with either your heel or your foot sword, as we sometimes call it. So it's a really powerful technique and one that's proven to be efficient and effective, both in Taekwondo, but also in mixed martial arts and other full contact fighting sports. So let's have a look at the kick that we're talking about first. Um, I'll get uh, Aaron to give me a back kick first. Good, I'll kick back to him, yep. Comes back to me. Yeah, a lot of power in that technique. A lot of power. Now, if you're not familiar with how to use this technique, or sorry, how to counter it, in fact, a lot of the time when you see somebody spin, your your reflex, once you've felt the power of it, will be to just get the hell out, <laughs> get as far away as you can. Um, what I'd like to show you is I'd like to first talk to you about how to get the person to react to you, because if you're not sure when they're actually going to spin. It can be quite difficult. And when a person's standing side on like this, they can actually do it in quite an untelegraphed fashion. So if, if uh, Aaron's covered up, and I'll just throw it back to him, you'll see how quickly it can actually come out. It can be pretty swift, right? If you're more square, you'll see the person usually step across and begin to turn, and that's a giveaway that they're going to spin, right? Yeah, we've all seen that. So, of course, there's downsides to standing side on, but you need to be aware the person can already set that back up immediately if they're standing side on or in that sort of straddle stance position. Yeah. So what's a common way for Taekwondo people to set this up, this type of counter up? Well, a really common way is as a simultaneous counter. So as I try to kick him over here, he'll counter me at the same time with the back kick. So he'll avoid me scoring cleanly on the front side of his body with the tuna kick and he'll back kick me at the same time. So one thing that I can do is I can throw the turn and kick and draw out his kick here, right? And if, I get, if he gets used to that sort of uh, stimulus, as I go to do it, I can take a different angle. So what kind of advantage can I get from various angles? Well, if Aaron kicks me here and I go on the inside, I can expose and open up his body for a counter. All right, let's, let's see that at a little bit faster pace. I might count with, for example, a turn kick, right? On the other hand, you just come this way a little bit. Yeah, sure. Nice. On the other hand, if he back kicks me, I can go to his backside too. So let's say, rather than me standing here and waiting for him to back kick, if he moves back a little bit, when I come in, I'll get him to back kick me back. Go. Beautiful kick. And again, go. And then get behind him. Get into a position that's difficult for him. Same thing again, as I come in, he back kicks me, counter him by coming into the range to get him to commit to the back kick. Great. So leading on from there, what about if the person mixes the techniques up? So one thing that's really dangerous is when you think, okay, a back kick's coming, a back kick's coming, but actually he changes it and he throws a spinning hook or reverse turn kick here and you walk into that. If you're committed to blocking your, um, to your body and he spins, it's going to be a, it's going to be a bad day for you. <laughs> so one thing we have to watch out for is trying to um, read the body language and also be aware of our opponent's tendencies. Um, a favorite thing among Taekwondo fighters is to mislead the opponent and draw the guard down with a back kick, to draw the guard down with a back kick, and then change it or just spin up the top with that spinning hook or reverse turning kick as we sometimes call it. So with a reverse turning kick, what I'd recommend is if he throws a back kick here, boom, there we go. And if I take an angle that is just for a back kick, go ahead, if I take it this, I can get away with that on the back kick because there's no risk of getting hit with, this, with the reverse turning kick. But if I take that same angle and he mixes it up with a reverse turning kick, sometimes it's dangerous. So what I'd recommend is rather than going 90 degrees, I'd recommend going 45. And when you go 45 towards the back, or relative to him, 135 degrees, so a little bit of a, a diagonal backwards 
the, the reverse turning kick and the back kick both won't reach you. So if he throws, throw a really quick um, spin hook here. Nice, good. Throw that one again. Very easy to move out of the, uh, the line. Because what you have to remember is that a high kick is not as long as a body kick. If, if Aaron spins and he just holds his leg out, he just holds his leg out to the body, you'll see that this is longer, and if he puts it up top, this is shorter. Right? So if I take a 45 as I go, I'll be safe from either kick if I take this angle here. If I go completely to the 90, but he does a reverse turn, I'm going to walk into that. So that's, that's useful for either kick. Now, if, if on the other hand I want to go to the opposite side, what I want to focus on is as he back kicks, as he back kicks, boom, good. One more time again. I want to try to get towards, I want to try to get towards the non-kicking hip. See his right hip here? Okay, that's the danger zone basically, right? So if I can get to here, I'm sweet. So if he goes with that back kick real quicker, this puts me in a, a, a strong position and him in quite a vulnerable position. I mean, you could argue that maybe <laughs> he could back elbow me, but it's very awkward, very awkward position for him. Okay, so that also works with a spinning hook. So if he does a quick spinning hook here, I don't move. Nice. Again, one more time. This position is, is not, not great for him. Yeah, this would be the, the king position in terms of how to beat a spinning kicker. How to beat a spinning kicker. So there's those two options. One final way that you can approach this is if you can't go uh, to the right and you can't go to the left, you can also go underneath. So if your opponent has a habit of kicking their back kick high, for example, up into your chest, nice, or even your face, that's right, then there are, yeah, there are options for you to go underneath it or to kick underneath it. And that can work, that can work with either a back kick or it can work with a, with a, um, a reverse turning kick. So as a really simple option, if, uh, if Aaron goes spinning hook a kick, nice, go for a quick bro. You can just kick underneath this way, or for example, another one, go. You can hook kick this way, yeah. You can also go with your hands. Yeah. It's, it's not difficult because the, uh, the length of his leg is shorter to the head than for the body. So all I do is, as he kicks, particularly if I'm the taller fighter, when I'm here, I just push my hips forward and extend my own kick under. Aaron will easily be able to do the same thing to me if I were to attack him. Switch stance, brother. He would just push his hips forward and as I kick, he leans his head back. <clears throat> exactly, exactly. So, you don't have to think, I won't be able to pull that off if I don't have as long legs as you. Great. Okay, so a really important thing to do when you're trying to counter someone is rather than fixate on when they're going to attack, it's usually more effective to try to get them to counter one of your techniques and you counter that counter. So if I'm always waiting for Aaron to throw the back kick to me or the spinning hook kick to me, then basically I've got to march the beat of his drum, right? So what I want to try to do is I want to try to get him to throw it in response to something that I do. That way, I take the proactivity or the initiative, or whatever you want to call it, off of my opponent. So let's look at a really basic example of how I might do that. Um, I'm going to throw a tourniquet to Aaron, and he's going to throw a reverse tourniquet counter, right? So I'm going to kick with my left leg, and he's going to counter me up here, okay? So let's just do it really slowly. Boom, good. And what I want, what I want Aaron to try to do is to hit me at the same time as I hit him. Ooh, exactly. Good. So one more time again. Now see how the first bit that I gave him, the first bit that I gave him, got him to commit to that kick. Sometimes I can just commit to the first bit and then bail out. Another option is as I go to do it and he goes to kick me, I can lean back and I can counter as, he, uh, as he's still exposed. So for example, some of you might be familiar with double kicks. So, if you just stay still, brother, um, double kicks look like this, right? Yeah. Now, normally, that, that kick there to his back wouldn't be a score in ITF Taekwondo. For Olympic Taekwondo, that, that could possibly score around the flank. However, in this situation, as he goes to kick me, as he goes to kick me here, right? Boom. You see, his body has changed sides. So, as he done that, I can kick around with the second leg towards him. 
So that's one good use of that double kick. All right, one more time again. I kick here, and then here, go. And I kick under, I kick under and around. I've got to get him to try to respond to me. And the advantage that I have as well is that this kick is obviously a lot more efficient. It takes less time, so there's less commitment involved. If I do just wait for him though, it can be kind of like being on the end of a baseball bat. I don't want to be at the end of a baseball bat where all the momentum is. I either want to be completely out of the, side, the, the way of the momentum, or I want to jam it up so that he can't swing it freely. Yeah, that's a way to take advantage of the spinning kicker. Keep them reacting to you, and take advantage of the opportunities that are exposed when they commit on your beat. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video on countering an opponent who uses back kicks and reverse turning kicks. If you enjoyed today's content, please come over to Van Roon Martial Arts channel. Check it out for more sports science and mindset coaching related knowledge. Thank you very much.